What in the F was that? As the bobber goes by. That was a fish. Maybe he'll bite again. Oh my God, that hurt. That was painful. I don't want to catch a cold. I don't want to catch cold out here. It's cold. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another addicted fishing video. Conditions are great. It is absolutely frigid this morning. We're getting a little bit later start just so we didn't freeze our poor little butts off. And mainly because this time of year when you do get these really big cold fronts that come in, fishing is better in the afternoon and in the evening. Sometimes it pays to be a little late to the river, let everything thaw out, let the river kind of rise a little bit uh, in temperature especially, and then give your best shot at coming to catch one of these fish. We're fishing in the river, we've hooked winter steelhead so far this year, we've caught some summer steelhead, some old summer steelhead, but we have not checked off the elusive winter steelhead yet. So we're gonna give her hell all day long until dark. We've got a pretty good hole behind us here, let's get going. Okay, what I'm starting with today, going bobber and a worm i love the worm it's a great hunting sort of setup where you can really fish will travel to it when a fish sees it from a distance they'll come and eat it it's a great way to cover a lot of water and when you do hook a fish a lot of times they don't come off so it's not that's why i'm not starting with a bead i don't need to heartbreak this early in the morning and i'm pretty sure there's a fish in the hole behind me but i'm going with my eighth ounce jig head red mustad jig head and my mini worm these things are fishy as heck i'm gonna be switching around between beads and jigs throughout the day but don't feel like dealing with bait right now and that scent, little addicted winter chrome. Already wore the label off because I put it back and forth in my pocket so much, but got the winter chrome blend on it. Let's go fishing. <clears throat> oh, what was that? Tad bit bottomish. I like the way things are starting though. So I'm gonna start close. I can, I'm gonna say it till the day I die, everybody. Start close then cast to the middle and then cast far. And don't get overzealous. Don't cast to the best part in the hole unless you got a buddy with you and you want to catch a fish before him, which I don't know anybody who does that, Marlin. But it's very, very imperative, you guys, if you want to catch more fish this winter and you want to be the guy that catches two or three out of the hole instead of just one, always start close, fish that inside water where fish might be, and then work your way into the spot where you know they're going to be. And odds are, over time, you're going to start catching a lot more fish because you're not going to spook that fish in between you and that perfect and that sweet spot. So I'm going to start close, go into the middle here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is it. I can feel it. Why does somebody always have to be running a chainsaw, hammering, or doing some sort of yard work leaf blowing when they live on the river? Can anybody answer that question for me? What a gorgeous morning. My waiter boots are still freezing. You can see the ice is freezing to my pants. Still hasn't gotten above freezing yet this morning, but I think it was a low of 28 last night. So I waited till it got to be 32 and decided it was time to go fishing. A really great trick as well for all of you out there who are fishing in the cold. If you don't have any like petroleum jelly or something to put on your rod tips, this is a very oily scent. So I use just a little bit of this winter chrome blend, put it on my fingers, smear it around your fingers, and then you can put it on the guides your couple top two or three guides and that'll start to bead that water off and it won't let that water freeze to it right away. So 
a little tech tip for you guys. Addicted Winter Chrome Blend also works as a rod defroster. Come on, fish. Come on. One thing I will say about trying to catch your first steelhead of the year, don't lose confidence in what you know works. Use the beads that you've always caught fish on, stick with the same methods, and a lot of times don't get discouraged that your beads and your methods don't work. The thing is, usually the fish just aren't there. So this is the exact same setup as I had on last week. The line's still good, I'm not gonna change it. We got a pink incognito, we got a natural one. Let's cast them. Oh, first, we must stink. Before we cast, we must stink, Confucius says. Man who casts without stink does not cast at all. Okay, bombs away. All right, everybody, we gave it a good try. Ran through all our different methods that I'm gonna use here. Let's head to a new spot. Okay, almost to spot number two. A little bit higher up in the mountain. And it is cold, there's no doubt about it. Crispy ground, cold feet, cold fingies, but I love it. The fresh air, and really just a search for that first winter steelhead. It's the first one, it's probably the hardest first fish to get of any species in the Northwest, I would say that first winter steel of the year because on bad years, they don't come for a long time until January and, and, and February. On good years, they're here right around Christmas already. Just like the fish that we're looking for now, but I'm excited for the season. Comment below on whether you're excited or not for this winter steel of the season. Mother night I've ever even caught one. I love these fish, they're my favorite in the world. I love a good sunny winter day. Hopefully this hole's got one in it though. Okay, to hole number two, and it's a sex pot. We got this beautiful seam coming in here. We got two different water colors meeting, but one of the waters is pretty darn dirty, so I'm gonna switch to a bigger, more flashy, flamboyant worm, go away from that mini worm, get something with a large presentation in there where those fish are gonna be able to see it. Fish that bubble line. Let's get the cast. So this is my early, early season worm box, everybody. I got some of these smaller worms. I got some, the pink haze, the sloppy smith, little guys. I got some peachy pearls. I think I'm gonna go with an old pink pearl. The old guarantee, white tail. White tail shows up really good in that dirty water. Save this little guy for later. So the way I like to put these worms on, a lot of people think that it doesn't matter, but you see the line from the from the mold on that worm. I like to go perfectly parallel with that line and try to get it perfectly set right in the middle where both lines are equal on, the, on each side of the hook point. I'm gonna slide it up there. And I think it is very important. You can comment below with what your thoughts are, but I think it's very important at times to make sure that that worm is sitting perfectly. Not so much because the fish bite it a certain way, but how it fishes in the water. If it's pointed off to one side, that worm's actually gonna kick off to that side with the current as it points up river and that jig head sits up river and the tail points down. So that's why I have to like to have it perfectly flat like this so that it will actually sit in the current perfectly right under the bobber and fish true. Okay, here it goes. That's good, that's looking real good. Oh, that was the old butt pucker there. Woo! I could see it hitting bottom, but when it went down and I sat back on it, I was just waiting for that womp, womp. It was more like a uh, not a womp, womp. Psych out.
So one great tip for you guys as you start to get out there and fish this year, if you're making a long cast, one thing I see people do too much of the time is have to mend too much on a when you're fishing in a spot like this, for instance, where you have to fish across the river. One key thing, thing that's crucial is how you keep your rod tip. You'll notice as I start to fish this hole here, the last couple of casts that I just made, my line wasn't even touching the water and I was fishing all the way across the river. The main reason and the thing is that I'm gonna teach you guys this is because that current over there is much slower than the one in the middle and is a lot different than the one on this side. So you're gonna have three different areas of your line touching the water that's gonna affect your drift. So if I can, in a situation like this, I'm not gonna inflict anything or any pressure on my bobber, but I'm gonna keep my rod at a perfect straight up 45 degrees. That's why we use such a long rod doing this kind of fishing is so that you can keep your line up off the water. It's not just so you have a long fishing rod. It's really to keep that line up and manage your line correctly. So I have my tip all the way straight up in the air. I have like two feet of line touching on the water and I'm getting a perfect drift all the way across the river and I don't have to keep mending my line. I've only mended it once at the beginning and that was to bring my line to that bobber and get it to where I wanted it to fish. So zoom back out and go down to my body as the bobber goes by. That was a fish! Oh, that was painful stupid mistake i was trying to film this little tutorial piece for you guys i you saw me shallow up my bobber i shallowed up to way off the bottom and that just drained i got two good head shakes out of i didn't i wasn't prepared at all i wasn't paying attention maybe he'll bite again oh my god that hurt that was painful bobber didn't go down there again that's for sure oh man that thing shot down so hard I could feel like the tension on the line of the fish when I when I set back on it. And I just didn't, I wasn't in time. Dang it. Dang it. I broke off my worm. Let's see if we can trick that same fish into biting the spinner. Then we better go find another hole. So what I'm doing here, you guys, you can see I'm not doing my typical close middle far two steps. And because I'm fishing just that seam line really, I'm just kind of starting and I'm making a cast about 10 to 15 feet down river each time, getting a big long belly swing, letting that thing be in the strike zone for as long as possible. With steelhead and a spinner, those fish want to see that blade glowing slower than they do fast. They're not going to chase it a lot of the times. So having that blade spin at a slower rotation and just kind of flop and bang on the bottom as it goes down river, a lot of times is a better presentation for a winter steelhead because they're colder, they're a slower fish, they're not going to be chasing things down. You just got to piss them off. So if that blade's just barely loping and spinning at a slow repetition, that's how you want it. That's how you're spinning. That's when you are actually fishing a spinner perfectly, rather than casting and retrieving, casting and retrieving. The fish don't have the energy to chase that spinner down like that. And you can see once I catch that current, I'm just making sure my line's tight, barely reeling a crank or two every few seconds in a hole like this, letting it swing. Keep feeling it tap some of those rocks, tap bottom. That's why I go with that two watt Mustad Psywash. I just got a blue torpedo bodied spinner on here, but uh, those two watt Mustad Psywash really are the best hook for the job. They bounce off the bottom well. You don't get snagged as often, of course, because you only have that single point hook and it works really good, so. Okay, new hole, going back to the basics. I broke off right before we left the last hole. So I'm going back to my mini disco worm. There we go. Okay, new hole, major juice bucket. Weeds in the juice right now. And in a, in a hole like this, especially one that you see like below me here is so wide and big and it's a lot to fish, especially if you're by yourself. So I'm gonna go with the bobber first, make a few casts through what I think of the sweet spots. I've never fished in this particular area before. And so then I'm gonna switch to my spinner, which is an even better hunting rig in water like this, because you can systematically cast and work down the hole and cover the whole thing where running that, that linear presentation down with a bobber can sometimes take forever. It'll take you all day to fish one hole and fish it effectively. The fish can be sitting anywhere in here. So I'm gonna stick with this to begin with. I got my little micro worm. I'm gonna work my way down past these logs and then come back up here and work a spinner through. Come on, baby. I can feel them. 
I can feel them here. I can feel them. What in the F was that? Oh my God. I'm going right back through there, you guys. That was a bite, undoubtedly. First cast on that line. That thing absolutely drained. Damn it. That's the thing with these early steelhead, every bite counts. Sometimes you really don't get more than that. But normally a biter is a biter and you can work them over until you can get them to bite. And that was, that was extremely fishy. That got me very excited. Thing about a worm presentation too is unless you're, you're set way too far in depth, deep, so you're actually, your weight is hitting the bottom rather than your jig head, the worm will keep that jig head afloat. So it's very uncommon to, to snag up and hit bottom a ton with a worm. And if that bobber goes down, odds are it usually is a fish. That was definitely a fish. <laughs> yeah, I sure didn't go down that time. What the hell? So, I don't know if anybody's noticed, the bobber hasn't gone down since. Damn. That's, that was heartbreaking. I love to say that that might have been a white fish or something, but man, that was too fishy. Too fishy to not give credit to a steelhead. Okay, just a couple more steps and I'll be back into the zone where I started or where I got bit. This cast should get in front of that fish, whatever it was. Will they bite the spinner? Nobody knows. Water is a little bit cold for it, but again, it's a great searching. These early ones are gonna be, they're gonna be dumb. They're gonna wanna chase stuff, they're gonna be mean. The only downside to our conditions is that it's really cold. They might be a little more sluggish, but Odds are these fish have never seen anything casted in front of them their entire lives unless they've been back to this river before. So usually if you get a presentation like a spinner or something in front of them, they're gonna go for it. Okay, we worked through it. We're gonna have to come back to this hole. If I leave it, I think for a while, I'll give this thing a rest. If that was a steelhead, I don't think he's going anywhere. We might stand a chance of hooking him again, but let's head down the river, find a new hole. Would you look at this art? This is an incredible piece. It looks like, kind of looks like cedar, smells like it too, but just a really, really neat fish mount. Again, one of these days when I buy a home, when we actually make it here on YouTube, I'm gonna buy a home and I'm gonna make fish mounts and I'm gonna put them on cool stuff like this. And I'll show you guys by making videos. But first things first, I need a house. smell beaver? You smell beaver? Isn't this cool, you guys? It always blows my mind how long some beavers will work on trees. I've been a fishing guide for 10 years and I've been going up and down rivers for forever. And it's crazy, some of my home rivers, I've seen trees that, tre that beavers have been working on for five years almost. They'll come up every year throughout the, out the year and chew on the trees and work on little patches up and down the river until these things fall and then they eat all the bark off of it and that's how they stay alive. It's really interesting little creatures and really good creatures for the river. Them falling these trees, putting more logs and habitat in the river is a very important thing for this, for salmon and steelhead reproduction. So, pretty cool to see. Way to go, Mr. Beaver. It's so crazy. You can actually see each one of his teeth marks as he's biting in here, here especially. He was really grinding. He's got them big old buck beaver teeth. Huh. We'll get some work on this tree. Okay, switched worms, went with the disco worm, went away from Miss America, put on the disco, found me a nice hole. Disco party, down tonight, down tonight. Got just a little bit of daylight left, that's kind of the thing about this time of year when it doesn't get light until 7.30 in the morning, eight o'clock, and it starts getting dark at about 3.30 or four. You really gotta hustle and you gotta cover water as fast as you can, so. Once again, if I have any big tips for you guys this early steelhead season, switch tactics quickly, switch holes quickly, and run around until you find a fish. Don't get stuck at standing at one spot, casting all day long, and wondering why you're not catching it.
Well, not bad for gas station loaded fries, eh, Brookie? Mm -hmm. Stepping it up over here, Shell. We're waiting on our burgers. No cooking today. We're too cold, too tired, and it's getting dark outside, so we're not gonna make it to the last hole. Now there'll be a few more videos come out before we leave, but just another big announcement. Sean and I, on Monday, after these videos come out, or actually when these videos come out, we will be on the other side of the planet in Chile, chasing Chinook salmon. Making a movie about this fishery down there. Uh, I've been down there once before, this time we're really going at it. We're doing it in a whole different style, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun and see some of the biggest fish we've ever caught on camera. So be on the lookout for that. I believe we might be premiering it at the Portland Sportsman Show. Don't know yet, that's not a promise. But everybody should definitely be excited to see it, so can't wait to eat this burger. I'm starving. Okay, the revealing of set berg. There it is, in all its glory. Now I'm gonna eat it. Oh God. Mmm, slurpy. They killed it again. Once again, totally impressed. Whoa, almost spilt the fries. Well, thank you all so much for coming along this journey today. We're gonna keep trying to catch a winter steelhead. I got another two days before we leave, so we're gonna be doing a truck camping video down at the beach for Stay Fishy, so be on the lookout for that on the Stay Fishy channel. If you guys wanna see more fun videos like you saw here today, click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this a thumbs up, comment below, and you can be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.